So there's this thing. St the Stanford University has a guide of acceptable words. Do you know about this, Kurt? I mean, uh, no, but I do. Introduce <laughs> introducing the elimination of harmful language. In well, that, <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of when, you know, somebody has, like, I don't have kids, and I, I know somebody will have kids, and they're like, we don't say hate, because like, the kid hates broccoli. Like, mm -hmm. what? Oh, I guess I just won't have that emotion then. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you something. So the word imbecile, the word moron, yeah. these are medical terms. Yeah. The R slur is actually a medical term. It's still. a medical term. And all of those were the medical and so terms. Yeah. Before, now you can't say the R word, but before it used to be those other words that you idiots, couldn't say. Moron, and they idiots, moron, imbecile, and they kept changing the name because it would get it would get a connotation. Yeah. And so then they would switch the word. The euphemism treadmill is called. You have in your lizard brain. You have a when you swear, do you know when you when you use profanity, what part of your brain you think lights up? The lizard brain part. Yes. So that stuff's embedded. Huh. And if you take a word and you make it not a bad word anymore, you'll just invent another one. You have a need for uh, words that are out of bounds. <laughs> Your brain has a need for profanity and words that are not acceptable. Well, we'll see. <laughs> you and 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 they, yeah. woke culture thinks they can rewire your brain. That's academic. They all think it's can't it's, do uh, it. Language is the basis of everything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a weird perversion of uh, I'm not perversion, but Noam Chomsky is a linguist. Yeah, there's a real strong idea of like, oh, you just change the language. It, you can't even have thoughts. I don't want you to have. So, oh, by the way, so I sent you an email. So can you go get that email on here? Okay, you got it. And then go to that website. So here are some of the, I'll show you some of them, and then I'll take you to that website. So here are some of the words they want to switch around. So instead of saying walk in office hours or walk up support hours, you can see the problem with that, Kurt. <laughs> okay, okay. Some people can't walk. Okay. So a person who uses a wheelchair can't walk in or, or walk up. So consider using open office hours or on-site support hours. I think the people in, hand, in the wheelchairs get it. You know, that's probably the most reasonable one I've ever heard of all of it. Like, they're like, hey, right. we're just going to change this. I go, oh, all right. I mean, I guess. I, 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 I could, okay. Yeah, that was insane. This term trivializes the experiences of people living with mental health conditions. No, it doesn't. You know what? Uh, phobias are a mental health condition. You can throw around everybody's a phobia. Every, everyone's that, a phobic. And trivialize it all you want for some reason. Consider using words such as surprising or wild. That wild's going to go next. There's no way you're going to keep no wild. There's no way you can keep wild. <laughs> X holds the tribal knowledge around here. The term trivializes the ancestral knowledge handed down through generations of it. So tribal knowledge you're not supposed to say? So consider using the phrase institutional knowledge. You know what else is obnoxious about this? First of all, no, it doesn't trivialize it. And the very idea that you would have the power in your office to trivialize generations of handed down knowledge is so arrogant. Like, to think that you're the... That's how arrogant they're like, we set the standard of yes. what everything is... So can you go to the this computer here? What's the other one? Brownie. Go to Brownie. So take Kurt off. And so here is this is this is at their PDF or whatever. Elimination of harmful language initiative. You know, if I didn't hear the term tribal knowledge used that way, I probably wouldn't even think about tribal knowledge at all. It's I mean, probably raising awareness of tribal knowledge. The the Streisand effect. Yeah. The Elimination of Harmful Language Initiative is a multi-phase, multi-year project to address harmful language in IT at Stanford. EHLI is one of the actions prioritized by this. Oh, my fucking God. The goal of the Elimination of Harmful Language Initiative is to eliminate many forms of harmful language, including racist, violent, and biased Again, you're not ever going to do that. What are we going to do? We need to demonize Russians, right? We're going to throw away our <laughs> Putin's they, a madman. <laughs> are they going to get rid of Trumpers? That word, right? How about that? So let's go down. 
Oh, uh, by the way, warning, this website contains language that is offensive or harmful. <laughs> Please engage with this website at your own pace. What other pace would I engage this fucking website in? I have to go to slow pace. I can't tell you why, because the word is too harmful. <laughs> so the first word is able. So the first category is ableist. Ableist language is language that is offensive to people who live with disabilities. Is it really offensive? Is it offensive? Well, let's walk. Let's look. So... Here's a word. It's instead of oh, I, it's not up here. So instead of saying addict, you can you should say person with substance use disorder. Wait, an addict? That's not a disability. No, it's much easier just to say addict. And you're right, it's not a disability. Oh fuck you! Is that still on the? <laughs> Using person first language helps to not define people by just one of their characters. You know, as an addict, that offends me. Yeah. So the next word is addicted. How about you say hooked or devoted? Because it tr saying addicted trivializes the experience of people who deal with substance abuse issues. What? How? That, yeah, I, How? Used to, I used to be really devoted to Oxycontin. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's good to say it like that. Basket case. Say nervous because it originally referred to one who lost all four limbs and therefore needed to be carried around in a basket. I, first of all, I didn't even fucking know that. <laughs> so if I don't know that, how is that offensive? And I bet nobody knew that until they read it in your... Can you come to me when I'm talking? And I bet nobody knew that until they read it in your goddamn thing. Okay, back to that thing. Uh, blind review. You should say anonymous review. <laughs> oh, that geez. is ridiculous. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's not a duck blind. It's a duck anonymous. I went on an anonymous <laughs> date yesterday. I'm not a... <laughs> <laughs> and then you got hooked. Uh, how about blind study? It's called a mask study. What? Because it unintentionally... Yeah. How about... You can't say someone committed suicide. You have to say they died by suicide. What? Yes. Why? Because that language trivializes the experience of people living with mental health conditions. How? What do you mean living with? They... They they're, committed they suicide. Died. They're dead. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> they're not living with it. it uh, they're not living with it. Okay, you want us to go <laughs> through some more? Yeah. This could have been the whole show. Confined. You can't say confined to a wheelchair. Oh, no. You have to say person who uses a wheelchair. Oh, they they could get up if they want. Is what that sounds like to me. <laughs> sounds like it. You use a wheelchair. You don't have to. Is that a choice? You can't say crazy. You have to say surprising and wild. No, I'm saying crazy. <laughs> you can't say cripple or crippled. You have to say person with a disability. Do you, do you see how all this is bad writing? Because you have to use five words to say one. That's called bad writing. Who's like, do people really throw around cripple like that? The only people I ever hear saying that are people who are disabled saying it about themselves to be like, <laughs> like they, I've never heard people say that. You can't say someone is dumb, meaning that they can't speak, you know, when they're deaf and dumb. Okay. So yeah. I need that for when they're stupid. Now you're supposed to say non <laughs> non vocal and non verbal. <sighs> because So let me guess. They got a consulting firm of some kind to this do this busy work, work and they got a lot of money for it too, like a big grant for this. You can't even say handicapped parking. Look what at that. Say? You can't say handicapped park. You have to say accessible parking. What? You can't say handicapped. You have to say person with disability. Look at lame. You can't say handicapped space. You have to say accessible space. Okay. Insane. Uh, so again, surprising wild. Here's a, here's a rule. Yeah, lame just, is boring or... Go, come back. Come back. Lame is boring or uncool. Oh, I usually say that's crippled <laughs> when it's boring. <laughs> wow, this is really crippled right now. <laughs> Should I not do that? Mentally ill, you have to say person living with a mental health condition. No, you How about don't. fuck you? Wait, uh, How does that help someone's feelings? It trivialize. It doesn't trivialize it. At it's all. exactly how serious it is. That's right. Because it's an illness. Don't say detail-oriented. Don't say OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, which is a fucking a, a specific diagnosis. Which is a mental health condition. Yes. <laughs> Call it detail orientated. No, They're not detail that's not, orientated. That's not that's understatement. Yes, that's not because that's not what it is. 
All right, going back, paraplegic. Say a person with a spinal cord injury. No. No. I'm sure they're relieved when you say it that way. I have... It, if you're going to do this on the euphemism, tra- you don't get to just add syllables willy-nilly. It should be the same amount of syllables or less if you want a new one. So instead of saying retard, say person with a cognitive disability, person with autism, or a neurodivergent person. I have not heard anyone say that about an actual person with a cognitive disability. Uh, I don't even remember the last time. I've heard people say it to someone who did not have that disability. So you say people use it as an insult, but I haven't heard people use it to describe someone who has autism or a cognitive disability in quite some time. Is that that's what you're saying? Yeah. That people don't use that to describe those people. They use it. Or if they do, they they know they shouldn't be saying it. You know, it's not like So can I say as an insult to someone when they're being Stupid. No, you know what you have to do. Can I say that they're being a not neurodivergent person, or that's an that's an insulted neurodivergent? Here's people. what you have to do, of course. And this is just good Atlantic style liberal uh, rules. I'm I'm using here. You take whatever their political affiliation is and put tard on the end of it. Yes, and you're golden. So if here it is. <laughs> well, here's re- so there's retard, and then here's retarded. It says boring and uncool. Those that that is not the same thing. What? Those are not the same thing. You see that. You see where it says that. It says retarded, boring, and uncool. So Those are not the same thing. What about my flame retardant pajamas? Can they, are they just boring and uncool now? If you, if you want to say sanity check, you can't say that. You have to say confidence check, coherence check, or a fact check. No, I'm having a sanity check. Those are different things. These, you can't say spaz. We know that. But you can say wet ass pussy. Can I say spurg anymore? <laughs> you can't say spaz. You have to say clumsy. What? But isn't that insulting to people who are clumsy? Yeah, I'm clumsy. I'm a- that hurts my feelings. Or how about stand-up meeting? You have to call it a quick meeting. Tone deaf. Can't say tone deaf. You have to say unenlightened. Those what aren't if you're the same- musically tone deaf? Like, I'm also musically tone deaf. Yeah. I- besides being unenlightened. Well, who who is this for? Like America, or just if you go to Stanford, you have to obey this. So instead of saying graybeard, you have to say the person's name. Instead of saying what? Call someone because this is about ageism. So you can't some, call somebody a graybeard. I used to call what, you know a wizard. Why would call, you ever use that? I don't know. Jimmy the Graybeard. What is that? I don't. <laughs> I've never heard of that. I used at all. to refer to cougars as graybox. Can you say graybox? I don't ladies? think you can say that. You have to use their name. Mrs. Robinson. You can't say gray pube. You've <laughs> got to use the name of the general. Can't say gray pube. <laughs> C- can't say senile. You have to say person suffering from senility. President Biden. How does that even How help? How does that make it better? <laughs> How in the fucking world? Does I that- think they're using the principle of where. You know, saying person of color is hugely he, different than saying color, color per- person. Yeah. yeah I know. Okay, I guess so. Here's colonialism. Ready. So you can't say Philippine Islands. You have to say Philippines or the Republic of Philippines. Why? Because that term is incor- politically incorrect and denotes colonialism. What What in the hell are you talking about? What? <laughs> what the fuck? I feel like I'm having a boom boomer fit. Here's cultural appropriation. You can't say brave. Say none. Do not use. What? Wait, what do you mean? This term perpetuates the stereotype of the noble, courageous savage, equating the indigenous male as being less than a man. Didn't they? So like a brave, like an Indian brave. Didn't they call themselves that? I thought and they translated did, in English. I thought that they called themselves like Indian chiefs and Indian braves. Yeah, but like maybe a that, soldier. But maybe that's a... Uh, bury the hatchet. Can't say that. Why not? You know, when I you ever do reservations out in like can't like in the Midwest, you know, Nebraska, mm-hmm. that kind of area, all the Native Americans I met there did not call themselves that. They called themselves Indians. They said it a lot. Oh, really? Yeah. By the way, again, India is not really the name of India. It's not. I know. It's like Baharat. So yeah. no one's using that name. I know. <laughs> you can't say Geronimo according to this. What if I'm talking about the guy? Oh, that's the only time you can use it. Oh. Can I can I get really upset and g- about and and say his name as if someone was falling? And go, Geronimo! <laughs> you can't use guru. You can't say guru Why? because that is a Buddhist and Hindu tradition, and then you're culturally appropriating that word. Fuck you. So I can't say raison d'etre. I can't say 
This is bizarre because all language. I mean, no. Okay, I get it. I can't dress up like a Mexican but, uh, ninja like I want with an outfit and the hat. That's apparently terrible. But language is literally a form of appropriating words. Like yes. that's why there's Germanic languages and Romance languages because it's just made of a bunch of people appropriating words. You can't say guru, Kurt, and you can't say low man on the totem pole. I bet I can say those things still between you and me. You can't say on the warpath. You can't say Pocahontas. Can I say on the... I guess that's because Trump would say it. Can I say Pocahontas is on the warpath? <laughs> <laughs> How about Pocahontas? Well, Trump said that when when she got tested, Elizabeth Warren, and they found she was only one six, whatever. Yeah. He goes, well, I guess I can't call her Pocahontas anymore. <laughs> You can't say powwow. You can't say spirit animal. You Let's just erase these people from memory. Wow. This is like genocide of culture. Like the, we're, So you're not going to hear about any of them ever. You can't say tribal knowledge. You can't say tribe even. Here's gender based. Oh, here we go. You can't say preferred. You can't say uh, preferred pronouns. You just have to say pronouns. The what? word preferred suggests that non-binary gender identity is a choice and a preference. But the pronoun part is a choice. You know, the part, the, the literally the writing it down, I don't mean however you feel, I'm sure that's not a choice, but saying like, I would like to be called tree, trim, That's a troll, choice, right? With the, all the real pronouns people kind of. say, that's a choice. You can't say balls to the wall. Why? Because. It leaves me out. It attributes it person. Yeah. It attributes personality to parts of your anatomy. Seems like a reach. You can't even say ballsy. Same Why? reason. Same reason. You can, of course, chairman, chairwoman, got it. Congressman, congresswoman, got it. Fireman. Do, do they have guys on this list, Jimmy? Oh, I, I bet they don't have guys. <laughs> I am going to, oh, they, they have it. Of what course. do they say? You it's, say you're supposed oh, to say folks. Boy. Yeah. people and or everyone you know, the mystery of why all these white liberals say y'all like they're from the deep south is because they're trying to not say guys so the guys is a term that reinforces male dominated language so you can't say guys you have to say folks that's not why i do that okay i call everyone men woman whatever i call them all dude i've always called everyone dude because it's the highest respect I can give to someone not knowing their gender. They're saying here now, Kurt, <laughs> Kurt. Now, if you go back to this, it says under under guys, it says you can't say have the balls to. But then look at here. Uh oh, hold on. Look at right here. It says he. What? You can't use it. Where? Where? I can't. Person's see name. Where it's, see where it says he right here? On the bottom. See right here? Right here? He. You have to use the person's name or oh. use they. No, you don't. How do you use a plural a pronoun for a single person? That's confusing to say the it's least. Like, uh, I don't the even, queen. I well, don't, they're saying don't just say he. Like you have to wait till you know for sure. They're saying unless you know the person you're addressing uses he as their pronoun, it is better to use they. How, why wouldn't what if he uses he and now you're gonna mispronoun him? Yeah, why should I be misgendered? Right? <laughs> it's like saying Ms. I don't know how you would even say he to a person. Who is, Anyways, are you speaking just don't about a person when you use that who, pronoun? Do you know what I'm saying? You don't say I don't look at Kerp and go, he he wants I, I would say Kurt, what do you want I you know, when you know do I, I use he directly to somebody? You, you know what I would pay? Uh, extra money for like you know HBO people would pay extra because it had it showed stuff you couldn't see it's not TV it's, is there something like that of language where I could just pay a like an eight dollar blue check mark fee to just say whatever the fuck I want <laughs> like like I have cable like after hours free speech that I could just say all the things so also here's go ahead oh the, this is just just a Stanford or is it like this is what this has to be just for the school, right? This isn't like... This is just for their school. They're going to erase all these terms in any of their publications, right? And so, yeah. So it's like a style book. So, yes. So look at this. So she male, of course. But get this. It says she male. You have to say transgendered women or trans women. Same thing for tranny or tran tranny or tranny. But get what they say. It says this slur saying she male tranny or tranny is often used disparagingly to refer to people who don't conform to gender expectations. Some in the community 
do identify with and self-describe themselves with this term, though. Yeah, that's honest of them. What is the what do they say about that? So can I call some so ha, they're they're saying that it is okay to call somebody a tranny if they self-identify as a tranny or a she male. That's what they're saying. Yeah. They're saying some people in the community identify themselves hey, as a she I male. I go by is it still does it still work in a porn search? And that's how you know <laughs> if it's valid. <laughs> You're not supposed to say transsexual. What? Well, you say transgender instead, right? Oh, it says, Steph, it says you're not supposed to say you guys. Yeah, right. It lumps a group of people using masculine language. Yes. yes. You're, you're welcome Tell that, that to the ladies, Mike. I, <laughs> Steph goes to a ladies open <laughs> mic. They could refer to each other as guys all the time, but not the transgender ladies. You would never refer to a transgender lady as a guy, but... Cis women, they refer to guys all the time. No, right. I, I, if you have a vagina, they'll call you a guy. If you have a penis, you better not call her. I always thought a guy. it was a good way to make it like, hey, I'm not trying to have sex with you. Don't worry. You know, like it, it takes the potential of something out of the language. Just call everyone guys. Like it's professional, is how I feel about it. Yes. <laughs> well, you know where I, you know where that term, this is a theory I have, and I'm pretty sure it's 100% correct. So I remember as a kid out in the 80s when women started to enter the workforce en masse that uh, women were afraid that men would act differently when they were around. And that's right. why men didn't want to have women in the office because now we can't talk to each other the way we always talk. We got to watch our language because there's a lady here and you got to talk nice. Right. So if you remember on those sitcoms, I do, the highest compliment they could give a woman on a sitcom who got a job in a male's office was, oh, she's just like one of the guys. Well, that's bad she's now. She's just like one of the guys. Oh, no, you don't have to worry about Karen. She's just like one of the guys. And that was the height of being accepted in the community of workers as a woman. You would be referred to as one of the guys. Yeah, well, wasn't that the point of having a feminist push to have your status raised? Yes, to, so you wouldn't be. They have more status than me. Shouldn't you get raised to that status? I No, I have to sit down to pee. That's how it works. I mean, I don't have to. So that's my theory. And uh, and women, that's the weirdest thing. Trans women, very touchy about their pronouns. Women don't give a shit. Um, Demi Lovato, uh, I, I have to give it to her. She was like, hey, if you don't get it right, don't worry about it. <laughs> she was real open about it. Okay. Well, now she's back to she. She was they. I'm not misgendering her. But oh. when she was there, she's like, look, I know it's confusing. If you don't get it right at first, don't don't sweat it. And I remember I had a can of gas above my head. Oh, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> hey, we're doing live stand-up comedy in Los Angeles, December 9th, 16th, 23rd, and 30th. And we're going to be in Tempe, Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Nashville. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for all those tickets. See you there.